Hey everyone, what's up? Today I want to talk about two basic web principles. Why? Because I feel like a lot of designers are designing for the web. They're doing website landing pages and whatnot, but because they don't understand what happens to their design once it leaves Sketch and moves into the realm of development, they don't really understand the process and they're very frustrated sometimes with the outcome very different from what they were expecting or they just don't know what to expect. And one metaphor for this is from a book I like which is called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. He's talking there about people want to ride a motorcycle but because they don't understand how it works technically if something goes wrong they're being very very frustrated and it could be something very very simple and so if you understand the basic mechanic of how a motorcycle works you're going to be able to drive it very well and not be frustrated. And I think the same is correct for web design. You don't have to develop or write code for your website yourself, but you have to understand the basic principles of the web because that's where your design is going to end up. You know, imagine you're a print designer and you don't understand what's going to happen with your file. If they're going to digitally print it or are they going to use spot colors or, you know, leave a bleed because they're going to cut it. If you don't understand the format of your, where your design is going to live, you're always going to produce lesser, lesser good outcomes. I don't know if the, that's the right way to say it, but less, less high quality, like lower quality uh, results and with a lot of frustration. So I want to cover two basic principles. Maybe you're aware of them, but I think because the web is very different from Sketch, you have to keep that in mind when you are designing. So first concept is called the box model. And basically what that means is that the everything in a uh, page is a box within a box within a box. So in this simple example, we have the body that's the most outer box. Then we have a box inside of it that's called left side box. Then inside of that, we have several other boxes, which are the logo, the header, and the button. And so there is kind of a hierarchy, kind of like in a matryoshka of Russian doll, which is there is a parent, there is a child, there is a parent, there is a child. In this specific case, there are also siblings because uh, logo, header, and button, they are not inside one another. They're just all uh, children of the left side box. Now, when you understand that, again, it's very different from your design software where it's just the layers stack on top of one another. Here, it's a different type of hierarchy. Some things are inside other things. Some things are next to because they are both siblings of the same parent. And it really, uh, it's really important to understand this because a lot of things are affected by this. Because when you set some parameter or some, you know, uh, some kind of a margin, some kind of a pattern, some kind of a size to a parent, all of its uh, children are going to be affected. So it's very, very important how you structure things and what is actually the, ch the child of what elements. And sometimes you have to think about this when you're designing because you want to know how this is going to be reacting in certain, you know, responsive modes or, you know, things like that. Again, every uh, box in this model has certain parameters, such as its size, such as its uh, inner spacing, which is called padding, and the outer spacing, which is called margin. This is very basic, um, you know, HTML and CSS stuff. Now, the second, the second thing you need to understand is because the, unlike our design software, the web is really responsive. There is no one size screen for everybody, and so you can't just think in pixels and you know just draw rectangulars because you know what you see here in this slide i don't know if this is means that box number one is just you know 600 pixels and the page is 600 pixels or it's set to take up the whole screen size whatever it is and or you want it to be different size you want it only to take as much space as the content inside of it and so you have to explain and be explicit as to what you want this to be should they be you know taking up as much space should they be uh, 50 50 percent should one of them be fixed size and the other one should be um you know take up as much space that it's left for it all of those things are things that you need to understand how you want your design to react to changes within the you know within the browser and you have to set those parameters so you need to understand what is you know pixel size versus uh percentage size what is you know 
flex. Flex is a way of how things react when it, they are changing. And when you understand those concepts, you can communicate them very well. Now, I personally, you, you know, I'm, I'm working with Webflow and in Webflow, it's very, very simple to just click to define what you want things to happen. But if you don't do that, you have to communicate to someone else how you do that. For me personally, communicating to somebody else in a structure where you have three columns and you want one of them to be fixed and the second one to take up as much content and the third one as much space left, the communication of this can be very, very complex sometimes. But one, you have to understand and you have to communicate this. But for me personally, as I've showed you, uh, setting these things up, super, super simple to do with Webflow, which is the reason that I'm doing this and the reason that I'm launching the Webflow Masterclass in the upcoming days in like next week, probably. Um, so I would really love you to check this out. I think this can take your design level and outcomes to the next level. I will catch you tomorrow. Okay.